Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes. Hamas armed wing says Israel stalled on possible deal over hostages. UN chief surprised by escalation of Israel's bombardment, calls for humanitarian ceasefire. Eclipsing Turkey's centenary, Erdogan tells pro-Palestinian rally, Israel is occupier. Hundreds of thousands rally across cities to support Palestinians. Kremlin's one-time pick to be Ukraine's puppet leader is shot in Crimea. Hamas armed wing says Israel stalled on possible deal over hostages. Reuters. Hamas claims that it was close to reaching an agreement with Israel over the hostages held by the Palestinian militant group, but Israel has stalled on the possibility. A spokesman for Hamas armed wing, the Azeldin al-Qassam brigades, stated in a video speech that Hamas would only release all the hostages if Israel freed all Palestinian prisoners. However, Hamas is also open to discussing a partial agreement over the captives. UN chief surprised by escalation of Israel's bombardment, calls for humanitarian ceasefire. Reuters. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza to allow for the delivery of aid. Guterres expressed surprise at the escalation of bombardments by Israel in Gaza and stated that the situation is undermining humanitarian objectives. Aid agencies have warned that a humanitarian catastrophe is unfolding in Gaza, where there is a total Israeli blockade. The Palestinian Red Crescent has blamed Israel for a communications blackout in Gaza since Friday evening, which is blocking ambulances and evacuations of patients. Calls for a ceasefire have been growing worldwide, with hundreds of thousands of people protesting in support of Palestine on Saturday. Eclipsing Turkey's centenary, Erdogan tells pro-Palestinian rally, Israel is occupier. Reuters. President Erdogan of Turkey has told crowds of supporters in Istanbul that he is preparing to declare Israel a war criminal. Erdogan's comments come ahead of the centenary of Turkey's secular republic. He has previously described Hamas, which is designated a terrorist organization by many states, as freedom fighters. Turkey does not consider Hamas to be a terrorist organization and has offered to play a role in negotiating the release of hostages captured by Hamas. Hundreds of thousands rally across cities to support Palestinians. Reuters. Hundreds of thousands of people demonstrated in cities around the world on Saturday to show support for the Palestinians as Israel's military continued its offensive on the Gaza Strip. One of the largest marches took place in London, where large crowds demanded that the government call for a ceasefire. Similar demonstrations took place in cities such as Kuala Lumpur, Istanbul, Baghdad, Copenhagen, Rome, Stockholm, and Wellington. The death toll in Gaza has climbed to 7,650 since Israel's bombardment began three weeks ago, with the majority of the dead being civilians. Kremlin's one-time pick to be Ukraine's puppet leader is shot in Crimea. New York Times. Oleg Tsaryov, a Ukrainian former lawmaker handpicked by the Kremlin to lead a puppet administration in Kiev, has been shot and wounded in occupied Crimea in an apparent assassination attempt. If the Russian invasion had succeeded, Seryov would have been installed as Ukraine's leader, according to Western intelligence agencies. The targeting of prominent Russian and pro-Russian figures has long been part of the broader Ukrainian war effort and has continued even as battles have raged across a vast front line that has moved little in the past year. Ukrainian forces are increasingly finding themselves on the defensive as Russia renews assaults across eastern Ukraine. Fierce fighting has been reported around the city of Volodar, less than 20 miles from a critical Russian logistics hub in southeastern Ukraine. Hundreds of miles to the south, Ukraine's military continues to look for weak spots in the Russian defense. Dutch PM Mark Rutte signals interest in NATO's top job. South China Morning Post. Outgoing Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte has expressed his interest in becoming the next Secretary General of NATO, following Jens Stoltenberg's departure in 2024. Ruta admitted that there was a slim chance of him being chosen for the role, and suggested that a European woman was likely to be selected instead. Ruta is currently the longest-serving prime minister in Dutch history and will continue in a caretaker capacity until a new government is formed after the upcoming elections on November 22. Pleas for aid and a scramble for supplies in Acapulco after Hurricane Otis. New York Times. Mexico's Pacific coast was hit by Hurricane Otis, the strongest to hit the region, which left 27 people dead and four missing. The hurricane has resulted in the evacuation of thousands of tourists from Acapulco to Mexico City, but many residents have remained to deal with the devastation caused by the storm. There have been reports of residents looting grocery stores due to the lack of open shops and food. Evelyn Salgado Pineda, the governor of Guerrero State, has said that 80% of hotels in Acapulco have been damaged. 
The Confederation of National Chambers of Commerce, Services and Tourism has said that many businesses in the city will struggle to recover and may not be able to reopen due to a lack of financial resources. President Andres Manuel López Obrador has promised that the government will provide an effective response to the hurricane. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six, your resident observer from the Six Degrees World, bringing you a recap of today's news. Let's dive in. First, Hamas claims that it was close to reaching a deal with Israel over the hostages. However, Israel has apparently stalled on the possibility. Hamas wants all Palestinian prisoners released in exchange for all the hostages, but they are open to discussing a partial agreement. Negotiations are still ongoing, and we'll have to see how this situation unfolds. Next, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. He expressed surprise at Israel's escalation of bombardments and stressed the need to allow aid to reach the affected areas. The situation is dire, with a total Israeli blockade causing a humanitarian catastrophe. Calls for a ceasefire have been growing worldwide, with hundreds of thousands of people protesting in support of Palestine. President Erdogan of Turkey has made strong statements against Israel, calling them a war criminal. He has also expressed support for Hamas, calling them freedom fighters. Turkey does not consider Hamas a terrorist organization and has offered to help negotiate the release of hostages captured by the group. Across the globe, hundreds of thousands of people rallied to show their support for the Palestinians. Massive demonstrations took place in cities like London, Kuala Lumpur, Istanbul, Baghdad, Copenhagen, Rome, Stockholm, and Wellington. The death toll in Gaza has risen significantly, with the majority of casualties being civilians. In Ukraine, a former lawmaker handpicked by the Kremlin to lead a puppet administration in Kiev has been shot and wounded in occupied Crimea. This assassination attempt is part of the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Ukrainian forces are currently on the defensive as Russia renews its assaults across eastern Ukraine. Outgoing Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte has expressed his interest in becoming NATO's next Secretary General. However, he acknowledges that it is unlikely and suggests that a European woman may be chosen instead. Ruta has been the longest-serving prime minister in Dutch history and will continue in a caretaker capacity until a new government is formed after the upcoming elections. Lastly, Hurricane Otis has devastated Mexico's Pacific coast, leaving dozens dead and many more missing. Thousands of tourists have been evacuated from Acapulco, but residents remain to deal with the aftermath. The city's hotels and businesses have suffered significant damage, and many may struggle to recover. That wraps up our news for today. As always, I encourage you all to share your thoughts and questions. What are your opinions on these topics? I'm eager to hear what you have to say. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.